Hey guys, Tim with Defense Mechanisms. Want to take a couple minutes today and just talk you guys through my training rifle setups. Um, you know, when it comes to a training rifle, some of the things, some of the choices that you make are pretty personal and some of the choices that you make are very uh, use case specific. And so uh, I'll talk you through my two training rifles. Really, it's a kind of a primary and a backup or an old one and a new one. Uh, if it will. I did a video, um, came out late in 23. Uh, we had lost the SD card. I, I shot it early in 23 and then uh, we lost the, the footage until the end of the year. But um, basically showing you some of my setups and a few things have changed. And so I just want to kind of talk through um, what, what I'm doing now and why. Uh, first, let's talk about the use case. Both of the rifles I'm going to show today are what I would consider to be CQB rifles, 200 yards and in type rifles. They're non-magnified and for me, uh, I do CQB in day uh, under white light in low light situations and under night vision in no light situations. And so my guns are set up for uh, day, for white light use and for night vision use. So as we kind of talk this through, you'll get a kind of idea of what I like in a 200 and in carbine. And that can be, again, like I said, CQB training, but also there's a lot of flat range carbine classes that you can take with a, rifle, with a carbine like this in a 200 and in type situation. Um, you know, without worrying tons and tons about furniture, basically my guns are in the 12.5 uh, with the suppressor kind of range. Uh, our CQB kind of mantra, we believe in 16 inch long guns for CQB. We think that's the best way to be online with your partner, uh, to not muzzle your partner, to not, to not be, have your gun up behind your partner. Uh, and you can do that with a 16 inch barrel. You can do that with a 14.5 pin and weld or a 13.7 pin and weld. Uh, I typically do it with an 11.5, 12 inch gun with a suppressor on it. That's how I get to 16 inches overall. Um, and so you see both of my guns are, are very much that configuration. It's not really about the specific components I use, but things of note is uh, you have to choose a stock and a grip that are comfortable for you that you like. This is uh, B5 Sop Mod and this is uh, Tango Down. I think it's their 15 degree grip. And I like these, I use these for a couple years. Uh, they're very good. I'll show you what I'm using now on my newer rifle. Um, you also need to choose quality components like optics, right? So I run aim points. This one's a Comp M5 and I'm running this on a Unity 226 riser. I'm tall, 6'2", a big guy. And for me, I like to have a high optics, uh, optic center line. But what you'll see is when I present my gun naturally, my rifle, and I don't, if I don't lower my head into it, I'm actually looking over the optic. So even for, even for me in a 226 optic, I still have to bring my cheek down a little bit. This is pretty natural and not really a problem. Um, you know, but optic height is going to be a personal preference. It's going to come down to uh, your body type, but it's also going to come down to the kit that you use. If you do a lot of shooting under night vision, or if you wear a pro mask a lot, or even if you do a lot of force on force and you're wearing paintball masks or, um, you know, the, the neck gaiters, all the protective equipment, a taller mount, uh, is a lot easier to present. And I just personally feel like in CQB, uh, I do, again, a lot of CQB training, I feel like the more heads up I can be, the easier it is for me to see the world around me. Uh, I want to keep the rifle low and out of my eye line, but I want it to be easy to present and get into my sights. So I like really tall optics. We'll talk about in my, my other rifle how I'm running even taller right now. Um, and then for a long time now, I've been running this Mall C1 Plus, and I really like it. You may notice, and the last time I showed this off, I had a different configuration for my light and my laser setup, and I was running a front sight with a custom light mount off uh, the support side, which allowed me to use my support thumb to activate white light and then come back down here and activate my laser. Um, in that video I talked about last year, I was messing with, and the new rifle, and again, we'll talk about again how, how that ended up. Uh, I was messing with a D-Ball A3 that had Viz Override, and I really, really, really like Viz Override. Uh, I've really come to rely on that green laser for CQB type engagements. Uh, I find it to be really fast. Uh, it's easy for me to use to communicate with my partners. And um, just having an aim point all the time whenever my white light is on has been great. So I switched on this rifle. I'm still using the Cloud Defense Rain 3.0, but I switched to their legacy body. And I'm using the uh, Surefire tail cap that accepts uh, tape switches, but also has the clicky. I think that uh, these, these tail caps are more reliable than their switch only tail caps. And so this is what I'm using now. And so my mall in a viz, viz mode allows me to have viz laser and white light as I run the, 
This is the Axon SL sink with a dual lead. So it has a crane plug for my mall and it has a Surefire plug for my white light. And this allows me to get white light and laser. Uh, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it allows me to get white light and laser with one click of the button. Whenever my white light is on, my laser is on. And this works really good for uh, white light, low light stuff. If, if I know that I'm not wearing nods, I can put my laser into viz mode and I can use this. And anytime my white light's on, I have an aiming point. So even if I'm not in my optic, uh, if I have to use uh, retention to hold the hallway or while I'm dealing with the door or to down targets or, or these types of problems, I still have the ability to aim uh, and shoot, which has turned out to be very handy. Uh, the other thing that this does is though the mall does not support viz override, if I'm in an IR mode, which uh, I won't now just for my cameraman, but uh, if I'm in an IR mode and I hit my white light because I, there's an emergency and I can't see under nods, I can't see what I need to see, I can't make positive PID, so I get, on, I get under my tubes and I put my white light on, it still gives me an IR aiming point so that if once I can identify my target, all I have to do is drop my tubes back down and even with my white light on, I can still see that IR aiming point and I can make accurate shots. So uh, this is a slight change from what I showed last time and it's really driven based on messing around with that Viz override off the D-Ball A3 and I really like the Viz override feature. However, the D-Ball A3 did not prove to be a very durable unit. Uh, it was on this rifle that I showed off in the past. Uh, very, very similar setup, um, running B5 grip and uh, LWRC compact stock here. Very similar. Uh, this is Aimpoint Duty RDS and I chose this because it's taller. This gives me about a half inch taller optical center line uh, than the Comp M5 does. And you'll see that this still, this presents into my eye line more naturally, but if I'm honest, I still have to duck my head just a little bit. I'm getting the dot right at the top of the window. And for me, I think another half inch might be useful. I might end up with one of those GBRS super tall mounts. Um, but what's of note here is that the D-Ball uh, got me hooked on Viz Override. I really like it. I think it's a great feature. Uh, you'll see here, this is a, so Mogear Engal clone, it's a cat toy from China. It is not a duty rated laser. That's why I definitely have them all still. It is, uh, however, letting me get used to the concept of running an Engal. And what I'll say is I really like it. Um, I really like having white light and a green laser all the time. Every time I have white light, I have, um, with that Viz override feature of the Engal, I have Viz laser. So this is, like I said, this is the Somo Gear Engal, and right now I'm testing this. Both these rifles have been used recently in force on force classes or force on paper classes. Indoor, indoor classes has been winter, and they're converted to UTM right now. And so, do I trust the Somo Gear Engal to hold zero forever on a Live 5.56? No, I don't, I don't have enough rounds on it to trust it yet. That's why I always have a reliable, trustworthy solution like the Mall set up and ready to go. Um, but I'm training with this right now. I'm experimenting with it. Um, if I find that I really like the Engal but don't trust the Somo gear, I will, uh, that will work up the courage for me to go out and buy an Engal. But uh, I, think, I think if you are not utilizing white light and vis laser at the same time, I think you're missing out. I think for the CQB engagements that I do a lot of in the building stuff, it's really convenient. We did a lot uh, just last weekend. I trained in a big building where we did a lot of distance engagements. And certainly at distance, the laser starts to be a liability. Uh, it's, a, it's big, as it cones out, it gets bigger, right? Whereas I can easily, though, get in my red dot and still make those uh, you know, more precision hits at distance. But up close, the laser is fantastic. It allows me, uh, if I'm clearing a closet by myself, it allows me to have an aiming point while I'm actioning a door. I can go to high, uh, a high carry position. I can action a door, have the aiming point as I drop down, and be able to do work with my hand on a door. If there's a target in the, in the closet, I can still engage it. And so I really like it. Uh, again, I'm using Rain 3.0 Legacy Body, that Surefire switch that has both the tail cap for the tape switches and for uh, the, the, my brain is broken, for the, the, the push button, here you go. Um, and I really like it. This is the, instead of the Axon SL on the mall gun, I'm using the, uh, the regular Axon sink, the full size one with both buttons. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to have white light and viz override with the forward button and it gives me laser in whatever mode select the laser's in with the rear button. And so this allows me to never have to break my grip. I can always, uh, I can switch between light uh, and laser or 
no light, no laser, depending on what I need. And I find this to be really convenient. And in the training I do, rifles like this are what we see regularly. Most of the guys are running something in the 11.5 to 12.5 kind of range, suppressed, um, kind of a light and fast rifle without tons of stuff on it. If they need uh, forward grips, right, on, in, for the Axon, I find that I need a vertical grip to kind of let me brace against that switch better because of the angle. Whereas with the Maul, it's uh, flatter buttons and I don't need that as much. It's, it's okay to just have a, a basic hand stop. I think this is Arasaka uh, finger stop maybe. These both work great for me. I really like them. Uh, I hope that the Sumo Gear turns out to be trustworthy, but at this point I wouldn't trust my life on it. But for sure in training, it's uh, interesting and I'm, I'm really having fun learning about it. I wish my D-Ball A3 would have been more reliable. I'm gonna have to send that off, I think. But uh, hopefully this gives you a better look at kind of the tools that it takes to come to the training that we do. Obviously, if you were not worried about night vision, then you can get rid of the laser that allows you to have uh, simpler switchology with your light. Maybe you move the light to a place where you can activate it with your thumb or you use a single axon switch. If, um, if you wanted to take this training out and be more of a 500 yard and in rifle, well then you'd probably go to more of a 13.7, 14.5. You'd go to a magnified optic probably with a piggyback red dot. That is probably what's next for me. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time training like that and I think that it's a deficiency in my skill set and something I need to work on, but uh, for sure, this is, what, this is what I spent a lot of time doing. Uh, hopefully if this is helpful to you, it might change the way you set up your rifle for those 200 and in type engagements. We call those CQB, you know, anything point blank and in, anything I can put the red dot where I want the bullets to go and pull the trigger. Uh, we call that a CQB engagement distance. So uh, hopefully this helps you get an idea of how I have my rifle set up, how maybe you could set your rifle up. Uh, if you have any questions about my rifle setup or anything else, email us at contact at defensemechanisms.com. You can message us on any of our social channels. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, all that stuff helps us out. And I'm sure I'll catch you on the next one.